while calculating the confidence interval estimate, it's very important that we make a good choice about the reliability factor, whether it should be T or it should be Z. Here in this module, we'll learn it through the flow chart that in what situations we will use a reliability factor coming from T distribution or we will use the reliability factor coming from Z distribution or if there's a need for another one. This flow chart will help us determine the right choice for using the reliability coefficient, whether it is Z or T or something else. While we are making the decision about Z or T, it's very important that we talk about four different aspects. The very first one that we talk about is whether the population is normally distributed or not. Secondly, we got to talk about sample sizes large enough or not. Thirdly, we talk about if population variances are known or not. And lastly, whether they are equal or not. Here in this case, let's first look at the, the case where populations are normally distributed, sample sizes are large, population variances are known, and they are equal. In that case, we will use Z to calculate the reliability factor. Secondly, if the population is normally distributed, sample size is large, population variance is known, but it's not equal, then we use again Z as the reliability factor. Third scenario is when the population is normally distributed, sample size is large, population variances are not known, but they are assumed to be equal. In that case, we can either use Z test or T to calculate the reliability factor. One can make their choice. But please know this, that T will provide you the more exact values as compared to Z that will give you approximate value. In the situation when the populations are normally distributed with large sample size, population variance is unknown but not equal, then one can use either Z test or T prime to calculate the reliability coefficient. On the other hand, if the populations are normally distributed but sample size is not large, but population variances are known, whether the population variances are equal or not equal, we will use Z and Z to calculate the reliability factor for confidence interval estimate. If population are normally distributed, Sample sizes are not large. Population variances are not known. If they are equal, then we will use T to calculate the reliability factor. But if the population variances are not known, but they are not equal, we will use T prime to calculate the reliability factor. On the other side, if population is not normally distributed, but the sample sizes are large, and the population variances are known, whether they are equal or not, we'll make use of central limit theorem and use Z to calculate reliability factor. Likewise, though the population is not normally distributed, but sample sizes are large, and the population variances are not known, whether they are equal or not, we will use Z if they are equal, and we will use T prime when they're not equal. But here again, we will make use of central limit theorem and assume that yes, it may follow the normal probability distribution. But in the case when populations are not normally distributed, with small sample size, whether the population variances are known, not known, equal, not equal. We will talk about a different type of tests which are called non-parametric tests, which will be discussed in the later module. It's very crucial we make use of right reliability factor while we calculate the con interval confidence 
estimates. If we make a wrong choice for the reliability factor, we commit an error of type 3. 